Hello? 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 Please, can you hear me? It's time. You have to leave. You have- no, you have to leave. They're coming for all of you. Listen to me. Listen to me. My name is Margaret. <laughs> Hello. I didn't realize you were waiting. Have you been waiting long? You seem... upset. Did you see something that bothered you? No? Good. Then why don't we take hands and walk together? Through a darkened ballroom in the moonlight. The ballroom is almost perfectly preserved, though the walls do lean, blackened by fire. What sort of people danced over this floor? And did they dance by choice or by force? Someday, friend, you'll know. Until then, discover the delight of drawing with Dolores. Greetings, listeners. I'm going to be going on vacation to uh, the Big Apple, uh, New York City, uh, pretty soon. And uh, so today, uh, we're going to draw one of my favorite buildings, uh, probably in the whole world, uh, outside of the Hobby Lobby on Route 44. And that is uh, the Empire State Building, where I hope to meet my uh, personal Tom Hanks, though I understand that it's uh, very windy at the top of the Empire State Building. So, uh, take a piece of paper and a pencil, and uh, let's grab our artist passports, okay? All right, do you have your paper and your pencil? Okay, in the middle of your paper, uh, nice and big, I want you to draw a vertical rectangle, okay? This should be long and thick. Lots of girth to that. That's the easy part. That's the main part of the building. Now that you've drawn that on the top of your rectangle, I want you to draw another one, but this one will be a horizontal rectangle and it will be very short, almost like a little hat on top of the building. And this is the uh, first level. Of the uh, of the roof there and you know what let's draw another one on top of that like the hat is wearing a hat okay another horizontal rectangle very short this will be the observation deck uh, and then in the middle of that uh, nice and tall I want you to draw a vertical line just one line there right in the middle of that hat hat. Now, let's go down to the bottom of the main rectangle and let's uh, let's draw another horizontal rectangle there. Uh, sort of like that first short one that you did a minute ago. This will be uh, the ground floor. Okay, just a little narrower than the main building. And uh, Coming down from the center of that, draw a very, very short vertical line right in the center. This will be the walkway uh, into the Empire State Building. And you know what this needs? It needs a sidewalk. So at the bottom of your short walkway line, I want you to draw another uh, short horizontal rectangle. Not too tall. Uh, maybe a little narrower than uh, the ground floor or the foundation of, of the building. Okay, oh that's nice. That's a nice solid sidewalk. Let's add, let's add some accents to this, okay? Let's, let's say two-thirds of the way up from your main building. Just draw a horizontal line all the way across, okay? This is uh, where the sun is starting to set or rise depending on your level of optimism, and shine onto the building. 
let's add a little bit more of an accent. Let's draw some short horizontal lines coming in from the left side, just spaced evenly apart. This, this can uh, represent uh, those, those bricks that go on the corners of buildings, but just keep them simple so we don't overwhelm the composition. You know, one last thing that I think would make this perfect. You know those little, uh, sort of upside down teardrop shapes that you see on the map at the mall that says you are here? Uh, why don't you draw one of those coming uh, from the tip of the uh, vertical line on the top of the building, that line uh, that's our antenna. Just a little you are here upside down teardrop. That's nice. Well, that's just about perfect. It, uh, really, um, hmm, it does look a little medical. But, um, uh, maybe going to New York is uh, the perfect medicine. <sighs> Story time, everyone. Story time. Mama Jess, knees bent outward, is on the wood floor, knelt. She owns a secret, an oil black secret, thorn bound in her breast. The howling winds they pray, whistling through the holes in the roof, but Mama Jess won't tell no one. Not today, not today. A younger man once cut her wheat fields, shirtless, he shone with sweat. Mama watched him, lust eyed, loved him gave him more than pay. The midnight wolves, they cry, peeking through the cracks in the wall, but Mama just won't tell no one. Not today. Harvest end, Mama just cried her lover wouldn't stay. So she swung the scythe and she cut him down. You'll never leave me now. Now the prairie dust, it swirls. Whirling through the collapsing door frame, but Mama Jess won't tell no one. Not today. Not today. Twenty years since, aged and lonely, her love buried neath the boards. Sorrowed heart, alone for too long, longed for love again. So Mama Jess did drop to her knees and wrench with all her strength. But strength was lost, and she died right there. Heart stopped as a clock. The willow trees, they sway, stretching shadows across the broken floor, but Mama Jess will stir no more. Not today. Mama Jess, knees bent outward, still on the wood floor, knelt. She owns a secret, an oil-black secret, thorn-bound in her breast. The howling winds, they pray, whistling through the holes in her eyes, but Mama Jess won't tell no not today. Not today. Oh my! That certainly was a disturbing tale. You're telling me. I've had it bad for a guy before, but sheesh. No, silly. I'm talking about the state of her home. It wouldn't be in such disrepair if she had a little help from Dandyfine. Dandyfine? How would that help? Why, everyone knows that Dandyfine is the ultimate all-purpose fix-all solution. It's thick, it's restorative, and it patches holes better than plaster. And with extra oomph from Dandyfine's energy-giving vitamins H and Z, you'll never run out of Z to do your chores. Did you say vitamins A, Chansey? I certainly did. Why don't you try it and see what I mean? On my leaky roofer and me. Both silly. Mm. Wowee. I don't know if I did it right, but I certainly feel like all my holes are plugged. That's genius. That's dandy fine. Let's listen in on our inside voices. <sighs> Dear diary. Last Friday's date with Logan didn't go like I planned. I thought Logan was just like this brooding weirdo who's different. You know, like really different. And I'm so tired of like the cool guy who wears all the right clothes and all the girls like him and just all that. I don't know. I just felt like Logan was something special. Like unique, you know? 
So when he asked me to go out with him, like all my friends were like, Lacey, what are you doing? He's so weird. And I was like, I know, I love it. And yeah, okay. I had misgivings, but ultimately I feel like you just have to grab life by the horns. And that's what I was doing with Logan, except it turns out he's just like a slave to a vampire who's apparently been living in the basement of the East Gate Mall. Like this guy sleeps by day in a locker under the corn dog place, which is disgusting. And Logan just like does this crease bedding. Like it's totally stupid. It's just, I don't know. And I said that to him, right? I was like, Logan, where are you doing this blood sucking weirdo's evil well? And he's just like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have a choice. He like promised me eternal life or whatever. And now like he's my master. So then like, as we're talking, Logan like tells me to follow him to this old crumbling mansion. And I'm like, oh wow. Yeah. So we're doing this. Like you're going to just bring me to your master who lives under the mall. Like he just goes, no, it's not like that. He just sleeps there because it's convenient for both of us, but this is totally his house. <sighs> and like out of nowhere, all these bats, like big black bats come swooping down from this bell tower thing and they swoop down and swarm all around me and I can't see like anything. And these bats swarm together and they take the shape of this like pale old gross looking like dude. And then he grabs me and I'm like, what the hell are you even doing? And he just like bites me. Yeah, on the neck. So, I guess that's it. Like, now I'm a vampire. And I don't even know what happened to Logan after that. Like, I think maybe I ate him or something. Uh, I'm so bored too, like I can't see any of my friends. Cause if I do, I just wanna like bite them and drink their blood and like make more brides for my master, which is such bullshit. Like, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. Oh, I'm so pale too, God. Thanks, Logan. And now, ask. Bethany writes, I don't have any friends at my school. I tried bringing candy and handing it out to everyone, but I just got in trouble. What can I do? I want friends. Bethany, Bethany, Bethany. It's a good thing I'm here for you because it sounds like nobody else is. But it doesn't have to stay that way, Bethany. Let's play a little game. Take the question you sent me and replace the word friends with demons. Then your question reads, I don't have any demons at my school. What can I do? I want demons. And the solution to that question is simple. What do we do to call demons? We summon them. And how do we summon demons? With dark prayers and, depending on the rank of the demon, small to medium ritual sacrifices. Now take this advice for summoning dark spirits and apply it to regular, everyday friends. Human friends. Human friends who probably don't want your firstborn. The advice really isn't all that different. Step 1. Offer your dark prayers to the evil one, except instead of dark prayers, you're offering warm, positive thoughts. And rather than offering them to the evil one, you're offering them to yourself, unless you are the evil one. Look in the mirror and say to yourself, Self, you're pretty great. You deserve friends. They deserve you. And here's the important part, Bethany. Just like with demons, you have to mean it. Step 2. Offer up a sacrifice. But nothing has to die for this. In fact, something has to live, and that's you. Find someone who needs a helping hand, a shoulder to cry on, or just a compliment on a tough day. It takes a lot of gumption to put yourself out there like that, and most people really rather wouldn't. But you're making the sacrifice. You're showing your, de uh, your would-be friends that you're good people that it's safe for them to be good people too. If they reject your goodness, they're probably dealing with problems of their own, perhaps even demons. Remember that, Bethany, and don't expect anything in return just because you gave it. This is a sacrifice, after all, and not a purchase. Demons are that way too, hmm. Step three, make a small creature out of mud and give it life with regular infusions of your own blood. That's all there is to it, Bethany. I hope this brings you comfort. If any other listeners toss and turn at night over answers not yet learned, you may send your questions by scratching them into the surface of your own beating heart or by sending a letter to ask at goodnightdearmargaret.com. Tell me a story of an empty house. A house that once was full. Whose footsteps still echo in your memories? Were they those of a child who's long grown up? Were they the steps of a departed loved one? Or are they steps you hope to never hear again? Steps that bring sweat to the palms of your hands. 
Do you listen to music to drown out the silence? Do you leave on the television to prevent tricks of sound? Do you both hope for and dread a replacement for the absent one? Does his shirt still carry his scent? Tell me that story. Tell me that story now. And now it's time to go back before we leave the ballroom. I'm sorry that I have to leave you, friend, but thank you for coming along. Good night, good night, dear Margaret. May angels bring you dreams. And when comes the sun, dear Margaret, we hope they'll allow you to wait. Good Night, Dear Margaret is written, produced, and narrated by me, Katie Towell. New episodes are posted monthly with a bonus episode for Patreon patrons. Special thanks go out to Chaz Simmons and Colin Hamilton for your support. To learn more, including how to subscribe and support the podcast, visit goodnightdearmargaret.com. 